Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dota Pit League. Season number three, group stages, Team Secret versus Hellraisers now into our second game, the draft getting started here. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, like we said, second game, first game, not very close. Hellraisers, unfortunately, on the receiving end of RTZ, some ridiculous crits, Kuroki with some really good play on the Venomancer, S4 with some beautiful Magnus plays, Zai with the lassos, and then Puppy obviously getting his Chen. Not a fun game. Hellraisers will take out that Chen immediately here in the draft. Again, we're here on Dota Pit. My name is Mott. Joining me today are Stats Man, Mott Packs, Pit Muckle, our production manager, and of course, Trout, my co-caster. Trout, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. It was a pretty one-sided game, but it was still fun to watch. Um, they definitely needed to ban out the Chen. They do so. So they ban it out this time. Team Secret's actually the ones to ban out SF themselves. So even though they really, really like that hero, they still respect the power of it when you can have first pick and pick it up right away. So... They take that away from Hellraisers, but yeah, like I said, more importantly, the Hellraisers take out that Chen, which I really think is the the bread and butter of Team Secret's best lineup, at, at least in the, in the drafting stage. They can get so much done by just sending him into the jungle, and then obviously he comes out occasionally and pushes down towers. We'll get a couple of kills here and there, and from that point on, they just have such an advantage because when you have a hero in the jungle and the enemy, enemy team doesn't, you know, you get a bit more farm off the map. It's a bit greedier, but if they aren't running anything to kind of shut you down in your lanes, then... You're going to get more out of the map 99% of the time. So Chen, pretty good pickup there. Hellraisers, don't want to deal with it. They ban it out. Team Secret ban out the SF as well as the Juggernaut. Two really strong heroes in the current meta. They're going to ban out the SF so that, well, Secret don't have the opportunity to pick it up for Arteezy. They'd rather not have it than give it away to a first pick for Hellraisers. They're thinking about what they want to do. Lines available still, eventual Spirit. Uh, they could open up with a lot of things here for Hellraisers and... They go for the Venge. Standard choice coming out from Hellraisers, and okay support to be sure. Yeah, Venge picked up. It's a, it's a good overall support. It can swap you out of tons of different things. Say if Team Secret wanted to pick up an Axe, it can swap you out of Axe Call. Uh, if they wanted to pick up a Clockwork for Psy, it can swap you out of the Cogs, things like that. So, just an overall well-rounded support. And uh, I, I, I think that on Radiant, first picking, if you wanted to first pick a support, I, I still think that Lion is quite good. I think Venge is very, very good on Dire for being able to take a fast Roshan. Obviously, you can still do that if you're on Radiant, but you have a little bit easier access on the Dire side. So I'm interested to see what Team Secret do. You mentioned how if you ban out the Chen, you still have the Enigma available. Well, with Eventual Spirit, maybe you don't pick up the Enigma just because you have the Swap, which is one of the best counters to Enigma in the game. Mm -hmm. Um so we'll, we'll see what Team Secret do. They have a, a wide variety of things they can play. I mean, it's not like Puppy can only play Enigma and Chen. Obviously, he's quite well-versed in many support heroes. But, I mean, you have to expect this. If you ban out, like, say, a Chen or even a Sniper and, like, SF's banned out by Team Secret, they're going to try to get Lycan for RTZ in any way, shape, or form. This is... We talk a lot about SF. We talk a lot about, say, his Razor. But it feels like more than anything, Lycan is Arteezy's hero. When, when I think of Lycan, I equate this with Arteezy, specifically in the mid lane, more so than anything else. He's won so many games with this hero. He's made it his living, essentially. Yeah, and it's really important that they pick up the Axe in the same phase, too, because Axe is one of the best heroes against Lycan in general. 
Um, just because you you instantly kill those wolves basically with level four counter helix, so you can never really attack axe and then just being able to keep like Lycan, he actually doesn't have the highest HP pool right. in the start, and he usually goes for a book early on. So like treads, Vlad's. You know, Midas if you want, and then Book. That's not a lot of HP items, so you can actually get that Culling Blade off very, very easily. Um, so Axe is a very good hero against Lycan. That's why I said it's very important they picked up Axe in the same picking phase. So they pick up a Bristleback. It's pretty good against Lycan. It's a lot of physical damage if you get those quills stacked up. You can negate a lot of his armor with the Viscous Nasal, viscous nasal Goo. Um, like I mentioned, Axe is deceptively good against Bristleback just because you can make him face yourself. Uh, but they have they have some decent tools against Lycan early on, like Ventral Spirit, negative armor, Bristleback, negative armor, using physical damage. So, um, But Team Mysterio, you could definitely strike with a very good duo here early on. Yeah, this this feels like it synergizes well. It's pretty good against the Bristleback, like you talked about, because of the taunt. Lycan can run away from the goo if he has Shapeshift up, which pretty early on in the game, it's not that 40-second cooldown in its third level, which is where it really thrives, but... Lycan still, he has to be careful of the Quill Spray stacks, like you mentioned. Bristleback, though, this is what I was talking about. I feel like more teams probably start picking this hero up because of how well he was played by Secret at DAC and other teams as well. So Bristleback gets picked in the second pick. We'll have to see how it pans out for Hellraisers. They ban out the Queen of Pain as well, interestingly enough. The question is, what do you put, I, I, I guess if Arteezy is playing the mid Lycan, which is a, a pretty good possibility, what do you give S4 in the safe lane? Yeah, he hasn't really been playing carries. He's been, been mostly playing kind of tempo controllers and ganky heroes and uh, team fighting heroes. So I don't think uh, yeah. Magnus is another good pick, but we'll see if they can go for it again. Yeah, you don't really need Magnus with Lycan. It's not like boosting his damage and giving him, you know, the cleave is that important. I still yeah. don't think it's... While Lycan will probably be playing... Okay, they do go with the Enigma, so they really, really like that jungler option, even with the yeah. special spirit on the board. But I still don't think it's beside Secret to put Lycan in the safe lane for RTZ if they really, really need to. Just depends. Like, if they see a really strong mid laner against Lycan, like OD or... I mean, hell, they could even run Bristleback mid, which would be quite good against Lycan, too. Um, it, it, it would still... They just have to keep their options open. Like, it still t could be smart to put him in the safe lane for RTZ. And then have S4 play something like a Puck or... Um, I mean, Quap is banned out. One of those kind of S4 heroes. In the mid lane. So it, it just depends on what they want, what they expect to have mid. If it's Zeus, Lycan should actually be fine. He'll take a lot of damage, but he should still be able to get farm if he ferries himself some health potions, what have you. I I like the idea of putting a Bristleback mid against the Lycan, if that is going to be the choice. I just, like you said, keep your options open. Uh, the Enigma for Puppy, the Rubik for Secret, Spell Seals galore, at least for the Zeus. Getting a, a Thunder God's Wrath or a Lightning Bolt is pretty nice to have. Even getting Swap Magic Missile. Uh, stealing something from Bristleback's not bad either. I guess you only get Viscous Nizugu or Quill Sprays. Either of those spells are fine, but it's just, it's not necessarily the spell steal that, that really is why Kuroki dominates. It's the early game and what he can accomplish with just, say, Telekinesis and Fade Bolt. So I think this is a solid choice for Secret. They go with what they're comfortable with. I mean, these are three of the top picks for their team and the players that play those heroes, so... Yeah, like you mentioned, it's not all about the spell steal. It's like the instant cast stun with with Rubik is what comes to mind is him being the be like one of the better supports right now. Just being able to instantly throw someone up in the air. They can't cast anything. It's got no cast time whatsoever. It's an instant cast point, and that's the best thing about him. So, like I said, if it works well with other junglers because if he does need to move around, it makes him very a very potent ganker, and he can kind of hold his own. So they have wow two very big counters to this Enigma now. Both the Venge Swap and the Silencer. I will say, talking on the point of spell stealing, it's actually not that impressive to me. Like, obviously stealing the ult from Zeus is would be great, but that's easier said than done. And outside of that, it's not that great. But like, like you mentioned, it's not all about the spell steal, and so that's what why they uh, like to run Rubik so much. So Silencer, another fantastic hero against Enigma, and I'm very curious to see what Team Secret pick up last. They're putting a lot of eggs into this stopping a black hole kind of uh, team fight here. Although Silencer ult is pretty good against just at everything in the game. It, it just feels like they're putting a lot here on the Enigma. And I, I think Silencer is a good choice, but how do they run him here? Do they put the Zeus as the four position? Do they put Silencer as the four position? I noticed a lot of teams experiencing experimenting with the Silencer support have worked out with mixed results. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. What do you think the best way to run this hero is? Oh, boy. I, I don't know. Like... I still think if you can get away with Silencer support, it's better. 
I think especially with the nerf to the Ag's double ulti with Silencer, they I think they knocked off one second on the ultimate, which with with Refresher obviously is two two full seconds knocked off, which makes a, a difference uh, for carry Silencer. So I think in that regard, with with that in re that regard, it's a little bit stronger as a support, but. I don't think Silence are that great against Lycan. Like, when Lycan already gets the shapeshift off, Silence doesn't really do anything to him. At best, you can cast the uh, last word onto him so it disables his, uh, or disarms him for six seconds. That's the best thing for him, but the actual global Silence doesn't really do anything for Lycan before, uh, if it's after he casts a shapeshift. It really comes down to timing and, and how Hellridge just fights. So, they do have a lot of early game, though, with the Zeus at a Bristleback. They could kind of just run at Team Secret. Not the easiest team to run at, but. They certainly have uh, an opportunity to maybe take this game and do some work early on. Secret with their last pick, going to be an S4 hero more than likely, unless they want to put Axe in the safe lane and give uh, Zai an offlane hero, which certainly could happen. They have 49 seconds sure. left to reserve time, so they have a lot of choices here. No, they, they that's actually a good idea. They could easily do that. Throw Axe in the safe lane, give Zai something like a... Uh, what's, what's available here? Clockwork or something Rider. like that. Batrider still in the pool? Yeah, exactly. Still lots of options. Uh, so, I mean, I actually, I've, I've seen a lot of Axe safe lane recently. I think it's pretty solid. Um, it is, yeah. I like it a lot. I, I was, I'm, I, I'm forgetting. They go for the Wind Ranger. So that's okay. probably an S4 hero in the safe lane as a farmer. And with Focus Fire, the damage is absurd, especially if you get Axe Scepter. But um, early on in the game, it comes down to Shackle Shots and Power Shots coming out from, from S4. He's pretty good at hitting those, those Shackle Shots. So I like the choice from Team Secret. Yeah, I forgot. He likes to play, or they like to put him on that. They also picked a lot of, uh, say, like one position Nyx assassins, which was I, I really dig, like dig that. Like, uh, I really think it's quite strong. Um, getting a level, a free level fast or free fast level six on him, and then roaming around was really strong. But, yep, they go with the Wind Ranger. Tinker is the last pick for Hellraiser, so it's gonna be Artis on the Bristleback and Afa Ninja playing the Tinker, and I think God Am is their support player, so it's gonna be a support silencer. How's this matchup? I feel like Tinker is probably pretty good against Lycan with March of the Machines, although Wolves will be kind of difficult to deal with. This is not a matchup I'm I'm used to seeing, at least not recently. This is maybe a couple like months ago, but I mean Tinker definitely has a, a better time. Just because he has a ton of harass potential with the laser rocket. And since it's a melee hero, the March of Machines could be a lot more effective against, say, a ranged hero that could just walk away and still see us from afar. So Tinker obviously has the easier time. Lycan, if he plays his cards right, should still get farmed, though. I believe that the March is all magical damage now since they changed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, they changed it. So that means that the Lycan Wolves won't actually get, yeah, like you said, won't be like, what, 80% magic resistance they have or something like that? It's a ton. Moves? Basically, yeah. no magic damage does, or magic damage doesn't do anything to him. Yeah. So, um, in that sense, he can see us actually pretty nicely. And as long as he just keeps his regen up, he should be able to get free CS. Yeah, we'll see, this... though, if Tinker, if Tinker plays his cards right and plays very, very aggressively, he could completely win this lane and completely shut down Arteezy. Just a matter of how well uh, Afro Ninja can do. I think if you're, um, if you're Hellraisers, you have to stack up a lot of the camps in the jungle for... FNJ, obviously the, the Ancients won't work, but give give him some stacks to work with in the jungle. That way he could secure that farm along with the, the farm in the lane and go from there. Meanwhile, they're going to have Gortz playing the, the offlane Zeus, interestingly enough. So they have a support silencer. Artez is going to be on the Bristleback, and that leaves Dread playing your Vengeful Spirit. So uh, interesting lineup so far from Hellraisers. Venge, pretty good support. Silencer, interesting. We'll see how it pans out, but... Arteezy is going to be playing that mid lane like he gets a Quelling Blade. He has a lot of pooled items. Well, actually, just two pulled tangos, the stat shield, and a set of tangos on top of that. And Zai playing the offlane axe, no surprise there. So S4, we'll see how he does the top lane. He shouldn't have any trouble against an offlane Zeus. They're going to try to contest the top rune spot. Affinage is going to walk through, doesn't skill anything. Kuroki's looking for a telekinesis. If they walk towards the bouncer rune, they might get cliffed, so they have to be careful. That's the thing. They're actually chasing down S4. He's taking a lot of damage from that arc lightning. Actually, they're going to secure it, Hellraisers. They bullied Secret out of the top rune spot area, and they're going to get both bounty runes early on here. And Secret don't want to fight into this, so that's a couple. Yep. Uh, that's a couple of good bounty runes going with Hellraisers. Yeah, this is one of the things of drafting a jungler is you do lack on is your level one potential. Like Chan, like say for instance Chen, Enchantress, Enigma. These heroes don't really offer much at level one, so you can't really bully someone out of a bounty rune. Tinker's on the losing. Oh, I missed the end of that stat, but 
Uh, something about Tinker not being good, I think. 1935 <laughs> in this matchup between oh. uh, Tinker and Lycan. Yeah, that's not the best stat in the world for Tinker players out there, but AJ getting off to a fast start, so not bad. I mean, in the laning stage, I, I feel like it's no question I think Tinker wins. Uh, like, look at the damage output going up from RTC. He's already going to have to ferry. He, 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 like, already needs to buy a salve once he gets his 115 gold or whatever. It's us. So I, nowhere near I his bottle. Here, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, see right there. He already buys a salve. And, and that's a smart play from RTC. Laser twice. He needs Sicky Missiles are up. Affin and Jay could do some right click damage, even try to bring down his wolves. So, currently, Hellraisers have a bit of an advantage for Affin and Jay. That could change quickly. Uh, bottle main Artez is going to be going solo against Zai. He should have a good time. Quill Sprays will stack up. They don't do that much early on, but once he gets some more experience here, he'll be able to just run at Zai, and Zai can't really do much. Zai actually goes for level one battle hunger, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yep. And that's. Yeah, he doesn't have level two yet, so there he goes. He got level two now. Artez is really far back behind em enemy lines. He's actually going to drag the creep wave with him. Is this too deep? Is he dead? He's taking some auto attack damage from the tower. He's going to have to walk all the way around. If Arteezy maybe walks towards her, maybe can threaten him a little bit, but he would end up wasting his time. But speaking of wasted time, Artez is kind of wasting his time. And this is a free lane now for Zai. If he wants to go back and get some... Well, he's actually going to use his time to put a battle hunger on Goddamn, but... He's having a much better time than I expected him to have in this lane. Yeah. He's going to get some CS now, get some room for experience. He's taking some right click from Goddamn. The Glaive's doing some work here. Middle lane, FNJ getting chased down by RTZ, sort of. He's going to laser up and just do some work. Puppy was getting a ruin, I believe. And Zai now taking more right click. So not anything crazy happening yet, besides Artez wasting a lot of time under that tower. He's he's just running at Zai. He's just trying to get in as many cool spray stacks as possible. He has one stacked up. He's actually out of mana now, so that's kind of a problem. And for Artez, we'll see what he goes for in terms of mana regeneration. Might get a bottle. There's a regen room, which goddamn will pick up. I mean, he needs to wait for the battle hunger to go off, but that's. I was like, oh man, if, our, if uh, Zai gets this, it's going to be so devastating. The only bad thing for, for Bristleback is that, okay, he does have a bottle coming. It's yeah. really important because if you get too antsy with those skull sprays early on and you use them all early, it, you can't really threaten your the enemy hero anymore. So you, you need to still keep that mana up. So it's really important that he gets his bottle quickly so that they can still harass and zone out Zai, who's already level 4. Pumping in auto attacks at Goddamn, who just picked up a regen rune. And I feel like our Zai has gotten way too much in this bottom lane. And they have, uh, the problem is if they had Dread here, they'd probably get this kill. But, I mean, Zai's just running at Goddamn. And if Zai had mana or had Berserker's Call, he might be able to get that kill. They're trading auto attacks, but Zai's definitely winning that trade. Now, Artez still, like you said, no bottle. It's actually on the courier, but they're going to send it up top first for the Zeus. Zeus has to go all the way back to the tier 2 tower. There's no flying courier, despite it being after three minutes now. They're wasting a lot of time. They're not able to get this kill on Zai because the quill sprays aren't stacking up. He doesn't have Viscus Desgu. They'll throw the curse to the side. It actually misses on Zai. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, Goddamn has the gold, too. He bought boots instead. I really feel like they need to get this bottle up onto Artez ASAP. And, in fact, it's actually going to go back towards mid with... I mean, he bought his bottle like a full minute and a half ago, I want to say. Maybe Don't just wait a minute for this ago. bottle to come in. Arteezy yeah, is right. gonna get right click, but he's fine. Thai's looking for the four minute rune. He'll probably find it. It's gonna be bounty, so that's not gonna give him that much. I mean, it's not to be. It's not too crazy that this is happening because it's just a dual lane in the bottom lane. Like Venge is not helping out at all. He's kind of roaming between mid and top, securing runes, helping out uh, the Zeus a little bit. But Zeus is only level three with nine CS, uh, whereas Zai is only up against two heroes. Or sorry, he's all by himself when he's almost level five. The, the offlane definitely going is a bit better in terms of least experience for Zai at this point. He's going to have Tranquil Boots pretty soon. He could even go back to the jungle if he wants. Obviously, he'd have to share with Enigma with Puppy. But uh, Puppy's going to be six at that that crucial time. Four and a half minutes. There's the level six coming at the black hole. No boots, though. Might want to wait for them. But they're going to rotate into the jungle. If Kuroki can maybe get a Telekinesis off. I'm not sure if they saw the Enigma with the Wave of the Terror. I, I think they did. But Puppy's going to walk back up into the lane and see what he does. Yeah, but Kroki's quite low as well. S4 showed today mag win rate, 45%, but S4 is just much higher with that and the Windranger. Um, just seems to be much more comfortable with these heroes. Oh, Dread in some trouble. Gonna get Malphys. Magic Missile's gonna go. Kuroki's gonna take some right-click damage and Magic Missile, but it doesn't matter. And that's the first blood. At five minutes in, that, that seemed to, to take a bit of time, but they finally get it done. S4 is gonna clear out this creep camp and uh, a couple of creeps as well. They can maybe even go with a push for, for Puppy with the Eidolons, but... 
Well, they're going to maybe think about diving here. TP coming back in from Dread. They don't go for it. Zai is taking a Curse of the Silent. Actually threw up a Battle Hunger. He gets his Tranquils. He's back home already. So he's almost six, by the way. That's frightening. That's really scary. Like, he can pump out so much damage on the Silencer, too, when he comes back here. Has the extra movement speed with the Tranquils. Has the extra armor. And Arteezy... He definitely didn't have the best time in mid, but that's to be expected. He's just kind of transferring into the jungle, taking a little bit of the jungle where Enigma's not occupying it. Bottle crying when he needs to. But uh Yeah, we'll we'll see how uh we'll see how HR fares in the mid game when these heroes will really start to shine. When you get a boots of travel up on Alpha Ninja, the Tinker, maybe a blink dagger up onto him, bristle back is getting actually bristle to Bristleback taking some damage too. Bottom lane. I don't know about this though for Zai. He's now taking too many Stacks of sticking a palm, or rather, not sticking a palm. Viscous nails go. I don't know why I thought that was that. Cool spray comes out the right flick. I'm losing it. They get the kill either way. Artez gets it done. I, that was kind of a questionable engagement from Zai with the Berserker's call. I guess he maybe thought Goddamn was not nearby, but Goddamn rotates over. They get the kill. They'll rotate Arteezy to the enemy jungle. Kroki TP's bottom as well, but this is they not can, an easy hero to bring down. They can kill this, this silencer really easy with the. If he ulties right now. Yep, there we go. Arteezy's ulting. He's in a rush in. Goddamn shit fall. Telekinesis Howl's yeah. gonna come out the right click. They'll kill the silencer. That's an okay target. Maybe they get Artez or at least a little bit of right click, but they probably don't kill him. So he just backs up. A nice kill on that support silencer. Top lane. S4 getting juked around the trees, and Goritz actually helps get the kill with Dread getting the last right click onto S4 and the Wind Ranger. He was so close, maybe about 5 HP for that Zeus. Does not fall in the end. Zai. Taking some cool sprays. Kroki nearby with the Telekinesis, but they won't chase any further. Kroki might get chased down as well. The Goo's gonna go. Artez has to avoid the Berserker's Call. It's gonna go anyways, but Kroki, he's gonna get Telekinesis off. The Quill Spray is going. He has four stacks of Warpath. The Goo's gonna go. How far is he gonna dive for this? He's gonna get the kill. The right click's gonna come through. He's gonna even just try to dive under the tower. Quirrell, qu clear all of the creeps. S4 is gonna TP in. Misses Ooh. his power shot, actually. Shackle shot already went. Artez very low, but he has the ring of health. He'll regen up slowly. No bottle charges coming out. Appen and Jay got to give one to himself, not one to his teammate. Now Artez picks up his treads, and all of a sudden, this bristleback doing work. Mid lane, black hole. That'll be onto the Zeus. Artez walking in, not doing enough damage yet. Gort should fall here. The Malphite's the last right click from Puppy. They secure the kill, and it's three to three. Action happening pretty much all over the place all of a sudden. Bottom, top, mid lane, and now at the bottom rune spawn, Artez has to be careful. He's low. He has to TP out. Zai can't get there to Berserker's Call. He just kind of stands there. Because <laughs> I guess that's it. And meanwhile, the tier 1 tower falling mid. They have a glyph. Are they going to use it? They pop it off at the last second. Afrininja is going to walk forward. Will he get the deny? And yeah, easy to deny for Afrininja. Puppy didn't really time that Did the he best. Not want to go for the. Uh... The chance kill on his rockets on the, on Puppy would have been really close. Oh, Weakened right. a little bit from the headdress so far, so I ah, he maybe could have got that kill. I don't know. It would have been very very close, but TP's top. Very nice timing on the boots travel for for Tinker. This is great for Tinker and HR. Like I like I expected. I, I thought he was just gonna dominate in the mid lane as he did. I, I like him. Just really couldn't do much if you're very very aggressive on your Tinker, and that's exactly how F Ninja played it. So props to him. Mm. S4, that was a weird rotation bottom, like he TP'd, the shackle shot was, he like turned around and did it backwards, trying to find some kind of awkward angle, didn't connect, power shot didn't connect at all, so HR fighting back nicely, one thing people forget about is just, when you're constantly spamming spells on Bristleback, like, and, and I know you only have the two spells, the, the, the Nasal Goo and the, uh, the Quill Spray, your damage adds up very quickly on Warpath, when he was, when he got that first kill on his eye, he was hitting for plus 100, on top of his already seven, 77 damage. So people forget just how much right click damage Bristleback can do. That level six kind of just sneaks up onto you and all of a sudden you're taking upwards of 100 damage per hit plus Quill Sprays coming through. They'll power shot our Tez, will do some damage. The Enigma does pick up his mech, but like you talked about, the Boots of Travel came out at about eight and a half minutes. He doesn't have Soul Ring yet, so that's the trade-off. Probably gets it at nine minutes. Zai's got a uh, Berserker's Call into Dread. Power Shot's gonna go. Dread is not in range of the threshold, but he's going to get power shot, and S4 is going to try to take him down. The global actually goes. S4 doesn't win run because he doesn't have it available. Now he's going to get the power shot. Actually misses, and Artez gets the kill. Instead of win running and staying alive, he doesn't use it. Puppy getting chased down. The mech's going to go. Lightning bolt not there. Zeus ult now. No mana for it for Gortz. RTZ now running after Dread. The wolf should get the kill. Wave of Terror does get off, but RTZ rotating in with the shape shift. He is able to secure it. So in the end, it's a one for one trade, but definitely not worth it for secret as S4 goes down. Well, Ortiz is getting good at farming. He's getting last hits on heroes. Like he's three and three zero at one so far. 
Oh, Artez runs right into Puppy. Puppy doesn't have mech just yet. Has six or seven charges on his stick. He's gonna have to pop it. That's not gonna be enough. He does have a Malefist, but I don't think it's enough. Ulti comes out. The KS King himself gets the kill. Brokey. Artez, he actually can get a kill Brokey? on Kuroki now. Bell is stolen. That is not gonna save you, Kuroki. He's gonna stick up. Oh, the Fable! Kuroki almost outplays Artez, and he does take him down. The gold goes the way of the Dire Side, which is split up between the creeps, and obviously, Kuroki does get that kill, but in the end, that was maybe oh. a, oh, the snipe, the S4 power shot. He just rotates over and finally gets something done with the Wind Ranger. He's been quiet the whole game, finally gets on the board with that kill. Yeah, he hasn't had many power shots connecting, but the ones that connected, like that one, uh, really matter. So, very nice kill for him. The problem still stands of Appa Ninja, though. He's got some decent farm. Uh, needs to close in on his blink, then you can really take off, but... Um, yeah, well, I'm curious to see when they go for a, a Roshan. It looks like possibly now as Artisi smoked up with Puppy. He can convert and maybe take a very, very fast Roshan here with this Vlad's. Yeah, yeah, this should be pretty quick. Puppy's they are convert that. bottom. They see S4 in the lane, but they have no idea that Secret are currently in the Roshan pit. If they Wave of Terror, that even might help out Secret if they're close to finishing it up. Artez is going to walk over there. Uh-oh. They realize they're walking towards the pit. They back out surrounding Secret could have got caught in there. That would have been disastrous, at least for Puppy. Instead, Artez realizes this is happening. He'll take down a couple of the Eidolons. Malphys and uh, obviously the Midnight Pulse are going to go. Doesn't really do anything. Now the March is going to go, giving, giving them the cover if they want to try to fight into this tier one tower. But it looks like they're just kind of sitting around the Roche pit. They don't want to give this up for free. So the really good game sense from Hellraiser is to make sure that they keep Secret out of the pit. Yeah, and they had, they had no other way of knowing just than instincts like they have no wards they didn't see them smoke um the only possible thing i can think of is they heard the howl from like and didn't see him on the map and we're thinking hey why is he howling for no reason they're not going on us he's not fighting us maybe we should check roshan it's like you never use your troll ulti on uh on roshan when you're trying to sneak it at least early on but yeah. uh yep so very good presence of mind from hr but instead of going for roche for secret they go very deep into the middle lane they're going to find Goritz. He's going to get Telekinesis, Wave of Terror. This should be an easy kill. Malphys is going to go Midnight Pulse. He stays alive. They black hole onto Artez, but it gets global immediately. Puppy realizes this quickly. He has to back up. Kuroki also silenced up as well. Getting chased down. Puppy taking a lot of right click. No mana for mech. He does have 10 stick charges. Bots in. Going to try to kill the creep, and they do. And now Artez is alone, but Puppy's going to back up. Stays alive. Sticks now on cooldown. Gonna get earned up, but Artez gonna chase him down. Puppy staying along, staying alive for so long. Kuroki with the body blocks. Telkinesis, shackle shot, not gonna connect, but the Blink Berserkers call. They should get this kill. Artez chases too long down the middle lane. He's so tanky with the Vanguard, though. Even as the Buckler is so close to the Crimson Guard, not gonna get it. The chop comes in from Zai. He says, how do you do? And now they make their way over to Roshan. Dread, though, he's got vision up here on the high ground. He can wave of tear, maybe swap out Artez right before it goes down if he's lucky. Will he go for it? It looks like it's going to fall on Artis. He's going to get the Aegis. Dredge is sitting up on the high ground, but a weird kind of set of events coming out there for Hellraisers, especially with Artez chasing down that far. They deny the creep as he's botsing in from Dread. <laughs> Wasn't that his own guy? Yeah. Uh, I, think okay. might have, I think he probably would have died anyway to one little auto attack from something, but I got to say in that last engagement, that was some extremely impressive play from Kuroki. Um, first, he, he he changed his his think or sorry he, he diverted his attention solely to keeping the tinker out and killing the creep that he was botting to. It had more than half HP, so it wasn't just like that one where we just saw oh let me just kill this creep that he's botting to. It was he had to drop everything he was doing, attack it once, fate bolted, attack it another time to make sure tinker didn't come in for a rocket to get the kill on Enigma, and then body blocking bristle back at the end to just make sure the last quill didn't get in range of Enigma to keep the stacks up. It was very, very nicely played by Kuroki. Some pretty impre uh, pretty impressive stuff. Presence of mind, just to make sure they get all those things happening at once, and suddenly Kuroki makes a pretty big play there. They take down the tier one tower bottom. There's the Blink Dagger coming out at 14 minutes for a Tinker. Pretty solid timing, but Secret's still doing okay in their own right. 2k gold for Lycan. He has the Aegis of Immortality, and obviously... Getting close to, I'd imagine, a book if he wants to go for it. So he's caught up nicely with the, the Roshan attempt. And... Well, Afa Ninja's going to start splitting up the map, though. He has, uh, Billy has got his free armor to work with. He could just bots around the map being kind of a nuisance. And see where this game goes from here. This game is going to, I think, devolve pretty quickly, so. 
Yeah, it's just a really nice selfless play from Kuroki. He could have or easily got turned on and just killed. Um, but yeah, there's the Crimson Guard coming out for Bristleback. Obviously, very, very strong item for him. Four staff on a Wind Ranger, so four heroes are picking up some core items. Or TZ already has his flats, has DD. I imagine what you go for the Necro Book. It's pretty damn good against Bristleback, like I said, for the same reason Lion is. You just drain all his mana, and the hero doesn't really seem to do that much anymore. Can't run at you with those quill sprays, that's for damn sure. Yeah, that should be the choice. The problem is being able to split push as a Lycan is, is not, doesn't seem that viable because of the fact that there's a Tinker this game. So they might just have to man up and fight here, but they do have a really good team fight. Black Hole's up in five seconds. Artez is going to get called up. They're going to bring him back. There's going to be the Midnight Pulse. Global's going to go through. Swap out. Dread is going to try to fight. Magic Missile on S4. He's going to kind of low. Lightning Bolt. Mech is going to keep them fighting. Fit spell was stolen. That is Lightning Bolt. Kuroki might get the kill on Dread. He will. Telekinesis. He's not in range of Artez. He's walking, but he's not that fast. Two already dead. The silencer got blown up as well. Kuroki is desperately trying to get in range. He's still a bit away. And Zai is looking for a Blink Dagger. Not going to find it. Goo, he actually disjoins it. Goes further. Doesn't get the, the call off, but... They stay alive nicely. Pretty good fight from Secret. And all the while they have uh, Arteezy taking the tier one tower bottom, which he'll get unless he gets denied. Heat seeking missiles are gonna go. And RTZ in trouble. He does have the Aegis, but Appen and Jay. He'll actually just TP out mid lane. Now a fight happening. They're gonna calling Blade Artez down to the ground. Telkinesis already went. Gord's getting chased down. There's the Malefis. They're gonna black hole. They should cancel that TP. They're not going to. Drake gets caught in it as well. Now they're, oh, gonna, they're gonna call as well. Dread's gonna fall. A triple kill for Zai with a counter looks box. Doesn't even need the calling blade. Doesn't need the mana for it. Let's just go to work. He says, I'm a man, goddammit. They're gonna get the tier two tower as well. There's a pause coming out. They didn't even need RT or RTZ. Or RTZ got the tinker. So he was wow, in a totally going wrong. separate engagement because there's two separate things happening. And he that still has something. his Aegis. Still has 4,300 gold, man. Oh, boy. Uh, Hold on a second. Hey, Muckle. Did you say we have a recap ready? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Since well, we're going to send it over to Pit Muckle, and we're going to see what happened in that last fight. Uh, when it's ready. Are you good to go? Punch? Actually, yeah, I actually have both fights up. Um, the first one, like, it was a minute of pure action. It was pure carnage, uh, starting from the mid lane, actually. It was a c cool engage, but the Global Suns was completely shutting down secrets. Like, any sorts of trying to reinitiate didn't work in the end. Kroki, well, it was a nice attempt. He actually got Dread with a stolen Lightning Bolt, and I'm just keeping an eye on as well on the live game so we don't miss action there. Um, and then, somehow, some way, actually, Arteezy was ratting it up hardcore in bottom lane. When he was getting a kill on Tinker, we can just fast forward real quick. Afanid was coming and he was trying to do anything he can to kind of kind of stop it. Arteza was on like 200 HP, was crazy, and he still gets the kill on Afaninja. While at the same time, there was some kills happening in the mid lane. And, uh, well, that was what you guys caught. I caught the uh, the bottom fight on cam. And also the black hole. No one cancelled the team. That was crazy. Dredd just going in. Going in absolutely <laughs> well. I want to say fearless. But there's certainly some other vocabulary for this as well. And that's pretty much what happened back to your mod. Fearless is putting it nicely, my friend. That that black hole was, was a little bit interesting, to say the least. And, well, Puppy finishes it off. Uh, a couple of kills going the way of Zai. They take the Tier 2 tower. They put pressure on the Tier 3 tower. And what was a pretty close game at one point turns into a 10,000 net lead for Secret because of some questionable decision-making from Hellraisers and some weird fights that they just they can't get the better end. It just feels like they're getting outplayed by the, the Secret squad at this point and every single team engage. It's a bit of a problem when you have a pretty good draft on your hands here, so... Yeah, and there's a straight up Necro 3 purchase for our TZ. He's got some wolves coming in, scouting out Goddamn. Goddamn's gonna just die to wolves and Eidolons. One more auto attack. Oh my god. Oh. That boy. was without Howl, by the way. I just wanna throw that, that out there. Yeah, that was without Howl. Oh, that's gotta be. Ooh, that's gotta sting, man. Just, you're, you're talking in, in all chat and your, your voice chatting. Like, I, I just don't know what I could do in that situation. Somebody save me. Hello? So, top lane, meanwhile, you have Wind Ranger. He has a Shackle Shot, but now after Ninja blinking in, there's the Zeus Salt, the Missile, and the Laser blow up. S4 getting kind of greedy for that kill. A nice little trade coming out. Secret are going to rotate back into the mid lane. They're going to try to push into the tier 3 tower. Arteezy pops the Necro. Now Artez, he has the Crimson Guard up. Now the Blink Berserker's call. They're going to bring him out of the base. Zai cutting him through. Now there's going to be the Global coming out. They're looking for Artez. They already swapped out with Eventual Spirit. Arteezy backing away, no more ages, so they don't want to try to commit too hard to this. Kuroki steals. Oh, he almost got global, I thought. He gets the curse instead, so... 
not quite getting that big ability, which would have been huge for them. They'll TP back up to the top yeah. lane and uh, no, not not as lucky as Rookie was hoping, I think. God, that would have been so sick if he did. Being able to black hole with the Rubik silence on your team. Oh man, the possibilities. I think you just GG at that point if that happens. <laughs> yeah. A little bit too much, honestly. If not, because you're gonna lose, because it's just demoralizing that they have black hole and global silence. That's it. He beats, uh, they keep the top. Don't even GG when they use the abilities, just GG once he gets the... the <laughs> when they stole silence. it, like, oh, I guess it's over now. Yeah. Uh, Kuroki is gonna get caught out top. He was pushing alone. They mass TP top for Hellraisers. They're like, okay, screw Kuroki, screw this Chiron Tower. Let's get something. They're gonna do just that. They'll get at least one building off of this and one kill. Um, so at least it's something. Bot's coming out from Puppy, by the way. He also has a four staff, which is pretty... I mean, he's farmed. He's the third farmed hero in the game behind Artizi and Afeninje. Even ahead of the Axe, who has a Yule Scepter, by the way. Pretty nice uh, item choice, so... Yeah, so I got so much this game. And even with that early kill onto him, it just... It didn't really matter. He already had way more experience and, and gold than he should have had. And this is a hero that can really snowball... And we've seen acts we've seen Zy play this here at the AC too, so Art says is completely out of mana at this point. Artizi is in trouble, has no shapeshift. Black hole onto FNJ. They swap it out immediately, but already FNJ taking too much damage. The Necro's gonna get the kill. Now Puppy's still going to work on Dread. The swap came through, he's gonna fall as well. S4 on the other side of the trees. Dread's about to get right clicked down. Actually just clicks him through the trees with a smart play. Goddamn getting chased. S4 on the backside. Shackle shot doesn't latch. Artez still with not much mana to work with. Artizi had to back up. They'll regen up a bit. Art Artez is actually in the front lines. Telekinesis is going to go. They pull him back. Don't really combo up with anything. Artez is sitting and just earning. Malphus under Artez. Out of mana completely. Quill sprays. Doing something. Now the shape shift. Shackle shot. Latches on it. 2s4 walks up with the perfect line. The angle is beautiful. They'll get one kill. Artez getting chased down. The call about to go. It actually misses. Artez is still shape shifted. Trying to get in front. Battlehunger is going to go. The Malphus, the Telekinesis, and they're just running rampant underneath the tier 2 tower. They are diving. Like Madman, Artizi gets the double kill. Uh, it's just that type of game for Hellraisers, much like the first game. Yep, and, this, and remember, Artizi did not do well in the mid lane. It wasn't like he dominated this lane. He got shut down like he should have. Don't get me wrong. Is, is that's not a matchup that he's supposed to win. But he transferred into the jungle. Puppy allowed him to take a, a few camps and was able to bounce back that way. And yeah, just better play overall. Up you gonna fall, use Salt, Lightning Bolt, and uh, Magic Missile coming out. The Snipe on a Dread does not get the killer urn, will do some damage, but not enough. Yule's on S4, Blink, Berserker's call on to do. Gortz is gonna fall, FNNJ might be next. Shackle Shot not gonna get the kill, or not the, gonna latch, rather. Can't get the Culling Blade off from Zai. TP coming in, Arteezy getting very low, he has to back up. His uh, creeps will finish off the racks. No, they get the glyph off, but it still should be the Eidolons getting the kill. Zai comes in, Culling Blades, poor Dread, who walks a bit too far forward. They lose the melee racks mid. Meanwhile, Yule Scepter coming out. Bloody footsteps coming up from Zai. He's trying to get away as best as possible, but he does get caught out. FNJ with the Yule Scepter secures the kill with the laser, with the heat seeking missiles, and they do defend. I guess you could call it defending as they get a couple of heroes. They lose their mid melee racks, and now they'll just try to push out mid lane. He went for a Yule's on Tinker. That's interesting. Kind of fun, I guess. Um. Jeez, I don't know. It's they had such a good, good thing going for them early on too. Just a couple of it was really one that I, I feel like when Artez overextended right there. Oh, Rocket's actually gonna get disjointed by his own Yules. I S4 wonder if it's gonna matter caught? in the end. Wind it, run? it might actually matter. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah he's he gonna died. get silenced. He might not die. Artez needs like one quill spray, one attack. We'll be fine. He'll get the okay. attack. He'll get the kill. Kroki's gonna TP in, and they might get the kill off Artez. Puppy has no black hole, obviously. Telekinesis is gonna go. Quill Spray has been stolen. That's gonna be pretty nice. Artezi gets a kill on the backside and Silencer. I was too busy watching Artez getting chased down. Meanwhile, Artez is gonna keep going, not finding Gords. They'll have a couple heroes TPing out. Artez is really just leading a, a wild goose chase here up into the high ground. Zai blinks in. He's gonna call him here in a moment. Zeusalt comes out as well, which actually gets the kill on Artezi as they were chasing him down mid lane. I can't keep track of what's happening on the map, please. Dred's gonna wave with Terra, Zai's gonna walk through, Magic Missile's gonna fly, Kroki avoids it with the Yule Scepter smartly. That was a sick play. Dred's gonna walk back up to the high ground, Spell was stolen, Magic Missile, Kroki's like, can I find a kill? Magic Missile goes, Telekinesis is available, they're not gonna try to get the skill, swap out onto Puppy. <laughs> Puppy has Black Hole, the Colon Blade from Zai. Now, oh, the counter yules from Afeninjay, styling on Zai, he has Blink Dagger in two seconds, Afeninjay has Blink Dagger in three, Global's gonna go. 
and they won't chase him down i don't think they're gonna mech up stay alive puppy gets alive just barely getting chased down malthus goes zai looking to jump in onto goritz we're playing ring around the rosie across the mid lane wave of terror rather it's gonna be matched missile oh, plus the uh fade bolt i what's happening <laughs> Croaky's gonna die. Puppy's gonna walk in. He's black hole. Is he gonna use it? No. Earn charge not enough to get the kill on Gortz. He might die actually to Malthus. No, stays alive, gets earned up. Double kill for Raffin and Jay with your Tinker. Poor Zai. He sat there for like 20 seconds trying to blink up, but he couldn't because the static field just kept getting triggered and canceling his blink. <laughs> he was very persistent in trying to get it, but just, just could never blink, unfortunately. It shifted a long from way. Are they gonna get that DD? No, Gortz gets cut off with the pass. Bowling Blade? Oh, maybe not, doesn't need it. Just goes down to the right click of Arteezy. He kind of juked it a couple of times and then he just cancels the R button animation. Diva's guard done for Affinity Jay. I mean, as badly as this game is going for Hellraisers, Affinity Jay is your leading net worth hero and he's leading by about, well, not much in terms of Arteezy, but he's up there. He's got a Shiva's guard, Blink Dagger, Yule Scepter. He'll try to find S4. S4 gets blown up, has to Yule's himself. And uh, actually, Arteezy's stays alive. Arteezy in the Roche pit getting chased down by Artez. What's happening? Hellraisers are just running at secret. It's working out for them. Arteezy's gonna fall. Croaky now in trouble. He has to be careful. Telkinis is gonna go. Then Izuku, they won't chase further. Roche is up if they want to take it. Afinijay gets a double kill. Zai rotates up top. I was too busy watching at the Roche pit. Artez getting chased down. Croaky gonna get silenced up. He steals last word. Artez backing away with the help of Goddamn. And more action happening across the map that I can't keep track of because my eyes can only get, be in one place at, at a time, so. All right. That was actually a really big kill on Arteezy. He had already used Shape Shift, so when they went on him, he had no other way to get out. Just had to take all the auto attack damage from Bristleback. And having the Venge Aura there it helps out a lot. Venge also has a uh, Medallion, level 4 Wave of Terror. And this is a Roche attempt. They're pinging out bottom, though. Oh, the There's global. They were going to black hole. Half a ninja stays alive from the silencer global coming out. Kuroki and Puppy just back off. They could have stayed and probably gotten the kill, but they decided against it. Roche still falling low. Arteezy and Zai both not alive yet. They can't really get into the pit. Four staff was down. Artez gets the Aegis, and they come back. They were down 12,000 net worth. It's only 6,000. I mean, they've lost mid melee racks, but they don't give a damn. They're doing okay this game. Yeah, I mean, and the, the best thing about it for them, too, is one, they have an amazing ability in Global Science to cancel this black hole. Kind of sucks that he didn't wait for it, because now the black hole is still available, but still, he, he saved the Tinker nonetheless. And two, they have amazing counter push with Tinker. One of the best, if not the best hero in the game to not only split push, but counter push and de-push as well. And with the, with the Shivas up, too, it's very, very effective. Going to stay top for the time being. Look at Deceit, they realize that he might come back up to this lane. Arteezy is going to be the one up in front. And Aphrodite might try to make a play here. Got to be careful. Diva's guard's going to go. They're trying to bait this out a bit. The blank, they actually missed the Berserker's call. The Yule Scepter's going to come out. Actually, that was the Axe's Yules. Aphrodite takes a power shot. He doesn't see the mind. So whatever smoke cake they were trying to go for from Secret doesn't actually end up working out. And they have to back away. And they can't even get the Tier 1 tower either. All right, yep. Artez gets an SNY, gets a Crimson Guard, he's got an Aegis. Is this, uh, is this a comeback path? We'll see. Mechanism up on a Silencer, which is obviously good, not only for the uh, the HP that you get, but the... Uh, oh, that's four! Taking a lot of damage. He actually gets Yules up, blocking the Shivas himself, but it doesn't matter. It gives him time to rearm again, and there's a wicked six streak for Ninja. So this Yules is paying off, and he clearly knows what he's doing with it. And it's, what it's ba basically doing is setting up time for him to rearm and cast more spells. And since he has the Yules and the Shivas, and he's got a high mana pool as a result, he can afford to get this level 3 rearm to just rearm things much faster. Dai's gonna get oh, caught, Zai. doesn't blink. Swap out, Viscus is a goo. Zeus Ult's gonna go, he'll try to avoid it, but actually takes the damage. Yules is again. How many Yules are they gonna use on this hero? They pop him over the air twice, they get the kill regardless. Zeus gets the kill. Nice pick off coming out from Hellraisers. They're still... Steadily climbing back into this game. They've even gotten so bold as to walk into the enemy jungle. They're only down 5,000 net worth now. That is huge. They're down 4,000 net worth. In fact, it's steadying uh, and kind of just platforming at that uh, 4,000 mark. But they're, they're even in experience. That is actually ridiculous. Now they're going to try to take a tier 2 tower as well. Suddenly, Secret don't look as comfortable in this game as they once were. Look at that stat. 4.2% for being down 11 to 13k gold. 
4.2% and this comeback, potential comeback is against one of the best teams in the, in the world in, in, in Team Secret. So that's that's a pretty impressive feat if they're able to come back. There's a Bloodstone on Tinker. I really love this item on him. Not only for the mana it provides and the mana regen that you get with more char uh, charges, but yeah, Arteezy in a little bit of trouble. They're not going to use the swap just yet. They don't have any way to lock him down. Hard to get really that Yeah, they really wanted to save the swap for defensive purposes, but... Uh, the Bloodstone is really good on Tinker because it means, especially now that he has a huge streak, if he's able to use it constantly, you can never get that streak from him because you never can actually get the real kill onto him. I think yeah. that's the most important thing, at least right now, having a wicked six streak onto uh, F and his belt. Eight, two, and six for your Tinker with 18,000 net worth. He was only leading Arteezy by about 100 a minute or so ago. Now it's uh, dwarfed to about 4,000, so... He's, he's having a pretty comfortable game thus far. Kuroki and Zai were looking to find him bottom, but they I, the problem with this is you don't have any real Tinker Wards coming out from Secret yet. You can try to get them on the cliff, but he's all over the map, and there's no real vision for Secret at all. They have one Observer Ward towards the Roche Pit, but that is it. Everywhere else is dark on the map for uh, Team Secret. Hellraisers are going to work here. They're going to push into this Tier 2 tower now. The last, or the second to last outer tower is the last one's bottom lane. FNJ in the trees, blink forward, and he actually gets the, the march off. Gonna be kind of annoying. Artez walking forward, has the Aegis. Gonna kill a couple of these Eidolons. The creep wave will die to the march. Malthus goes into Artez. He's kind of low in mana. He has to be careful. Top lane, they'll get the tier one. The glyph's gonna be forced out. Arteezy gets the kill. They have another glyph to use on the tier two tower. There's also a glyph from Secret to use, but might be a trade. Two towers for a tier two mid. FNJ blinks forward, doesn't get any damage coming out. He was looking for a laser, couldn't find it. <laughs> Ruby Wop gets rearm. Red going on a puppy. Puppy's about to fall. Zeusol gets the kill. Puppy has to buy back. Ots is in. Dread now going to get called up. Puppy looking for a black hole, but there's the global. They don't wait for it. Now they get pushed back. Meanwhile, at the base, Arteezy going to work with S4. Affinage has to defend. Back to the fight. Artez getting chased down by Kuroki. And they're going to use him up. Puppy looking for a black hole. He's probably going to find it. Artez still has Aegis. He black holes, but only on Degoris. They get the shackle shot onto Artez. They kill the Zeus. They're looking to get Artez. They'll have to kill him twice. Artez so tanky, but he gets telekinesis. He's going to fall. TP in. They can't kill the Siege Crypt. Now there's going to be the Yules up onto Affinity, but he TPs into a world of hurt. Another Yule Scepter coming out. Goddamn, going to last word. Berserker's call going to go Affinity. Now can they get the silence off? Zai getting chased down the right cliff from Goddamn and Affinity going to work. They get the kill. And Artez does not fall for that second time. Kuroki just walks away, heads towards the bottom rune spot. Kind of stays there looking for the 32-minute rune. He'll find a bounty rune. That's not the rune he's looking for. He'll have to TP away. Swap out. That rune might have just killed him. Kuroki getting run down by that warp path coming. He cuts off the retreat by TPing to the bottom lane. And he'll TP back home. They get three kills. And Hellraisers are winning all of the fights. They do lose the Tier 2 tower top and a bit of tower damage to the Tier 3. But still, a small price to pay for that many kills for Hellraisers. Yeah, and I, I really like this item build from Tinker. Like, the, the Shiva's Bloodstone, I think, is much stronger than the Dagon right now. And speaking of, Windrunner's actually in some trouble. Get gonna force up. Low ground? Half a ninja. Put in some uh, he's more going damage. He's going in deep. They're going to keep going. Artez is there. No more Windrun. Shackle shot latches, but doesn't go to a tree or to another hero. And they're going to go to Puppy. Puppy has no buyback. Puppy is going to fall here, it looks like. And like you said, no buyback. He is going to go down. Dead for 78 seconds. They're going to go to work here on this tier 2 tower. Meanwhile, middle and RTZ runs down mid. Does get the kill on the Zeus. He's trying to put as much pressure as possible before leaving. Another TP, this time coming from Affinity. They'll probably get the range racks. They have Glyph. I don't know if you use it. They actually might survive still. It looks like it will. Affinity will probably get to his team if they want to try to fight up to the high ground. But that doesn't look to be the case. All right. Uh, there's, there's not a moment of wasted time here in this game for either team. And with that said, I think we have a replay ready. Pitmunkle, take it away. Alright, so let's uh, take another quick look at some absolutely crazy fights. So, first of all, uh, Hellraisers, they're feeling very confident, just pushing in. Then there was a nice swap from Dread onto Poppy. Poppy just explodes. Great Thunder God's Wrath. Two ultis for a Poppy. Well, that's a great trade because, like we mentioned in the last fight, it was crucial that Poppy actually didn't have his buyback. And then everything just went downhill, even though there was Secret uh, having a nice decision with trying to ret it up on Arteezy as well as S4. But they just couldn't push fast enough, and it felt like a very forced uh, TP back. Effinger catches Arteezy while trying to TP back. That's huge. Meanwhile, actually, let's switch to the live broadcast while we don't want to miss a kill. Well, Arteezy's gonna yeah, get used up. He does have a haste rune. He's gonna shapeshift out now. Magic missile, but Zai comes in. Yule Scepter up onto Affinity. Keeps him alive. Zai tipping away. Did they have swap for Dread? They did, but 
They're going to chase after <laughs> another Yule Smash and NJ. They're trying to keep RTZ up in the air as much as possible. Match Missile Zeus, so RTZ is going to fall. And FNJ is godlike with that kill. And Hellraisers, are they slaying the giant here, the Goliath? Secret in some trouble. 27 to 29. A 4,000 net worth lead for Hellraisers. FNJ putting on a clinic here on this Tinker. Uh, this is a really impressive play from Afinincha. Like, he did well in the laning stage, he re like he should have, like I said. Sheep stick now completed. Oh my god, he's got a sheep stick now onto Afinincha. He can rearm that. Kuroki's gonna get chased down. They killed three heroes in the span of like 20 seconds. All of them doing a buyback. The best possible choice for Secret is to rat it up and try to go for this tower. But guess who's gonna come back home and then go right back to the mid lane? Afinincha will take care of the wave. Push it out, then go back towards that middle lane and help out his team. Steven's guard's gonna go quick. He's actually chasing after S4. He gets the hex off. Can he get the perma hex? Another sheep is gonna go. S4 about to fall. The third hex is gonna go. FNNJ is beyond godlike. He's about to TP mid. And S4 doesn't have buyback. Puppy will not have it either. He's gonna fall. Can't even get the black hole off. They're all freaking dead. They get the kill. Secret. All five down on the sidelines. RTZ about to respawn in three seconds, but what the hell can he do? Artez on the front lines. How did this game go so poorly for Secret within the past five to ten minutes? Artez ports in. Artez ports in. Afinitia in a little bit of trouble, but not really that much. He's gonna hex he him. Artez is gonna die. Artez won't have buyback if he dies. Get the perma hex continues. Afinitia with like six perma hexes in a row. Artez barely surviving. The shape shift actually lives. Afinitia in danger of going down to the creeps. Bottle back up, and Afinitia has to use Artez, but he's in trouble. Can't blink out. Can't use himself. They actually go back to the top lane. Global silence. What's happening up here is Zai BKB. Berserker Skull is going to go, but still getting right click down. Artez going to where Crimson Guard. Zai getting chased through the warpath, doing so much here damage. Here comes Tinker. Scepter. Tinker's back into the fray. He was just getting chased down by Artez, but Kuroki's already dead. <laughs> and oh my god, Artez and FNJ combining up to get these sick kills. They're going to keep S4 corralled at the base. Shaq will shot Artez. He's like, I don't even give a damn. We've already gotten your mid set of racks. We can even go top if we want, if we damn well please. Artez going to TP back home into the base. Too close for comfort for both of these squads. Dread's going to get caught out. Puppy pops at the Midnight Pulse. Dread goes down. Affin and JTP's back in. Puppy, he's going to get hexed up again. The Shaq will shot. They bring him down. No buyback yet again. S4 getting chased up the right click. And now another Yule Scepter, another Sheep. He's out of mana, but he has the hex up. Arteezy, he can't afford to die here, and he'll go down. Oh, the GG. GG is called 37 minutes in. Are you freaking kidding me? Secret. They throw the game away, but not without some superb play from J on that Tinker, who played absolutely out of his fucking mind. Oh, man. He really did, man. There's no other way to put it. Like, the item build was... I, I, I said it, it was fun at the beginning because I think Yules is just a fun item in general, especially on Tinker when you can ca constantly cast it. Uh, that part aside, the Bloodstone Sheevas is very, very good because if you saw right there in the middle when they got engaged on after he TP'd in, he got Yules up and he got called. And I thought there was a second, I was like, oh no, this is where Tinker's going to be in trouble. But nope, he's got too much HP, he's got too much armor. The call and the damage from, from Zaya at that point did very, very little. And uh, he was just very, very tanky with this build. And then at the in the top, when you saw that long engagement 1v1 between him and Arteezy, yes, he was getting mana burned by the Necro Creeps, 